So now we're at the final question for 5.1, example six. Let the random variable x represent the number of girls in a family of three children. Okay. Construct a table describing the probability distribution, then find the mean and standard deviation. Is three girls a significantly high number of girls for a family of three children? All right. Well, so the first thing we got to do is get our x and our p of x filled in for this problem. So what possible values of x could we have? We're looking at the number of ch girls in a family of three children. So how many girls, what are the different possibilities of girls you could have? Very similar to what we did at the beginning of this section. Now, could you have no girls? Certainly, you could have all boys. You could have one girl. You could have two girls, or you could have all girls of three. All right. So now, if we wanted to find our probabilities, we need to do a tree diagram. So the first child is either going to be a boy or a girl. The second child is a boy or a girl or a boy or a girl. And then the third is a boy or a girl boy or girl. Now, if you don't need a tree diagram, obviously you don't have to do one, but it just helps visualize it a little bit easier. But now we got to make sure we get our sample space correct. So, so in our sample space, we got to go down every branch. So one boy, two boys, three boys, boy, boy, girl, Boy, girl, boy. Boy, girl, girl. Girl, boy, boy. Girl, boy, girl. Uh, girl, girl, boy. And girl, girl, girl. All right. So now we have our entire population, our entire sample space, which is all possible combinations for this situation. So what's the probability of getting zero girls? Well, there's one case where they're all boys out of how many? Out of eight, right? So one out of eight, which is 0.125. What about one girl? Well, we got one girl here, we got one girl here, one girl here, and that looks like about it. So three out of eight, so 0.375. Two girls, uh, one here, two, three. Creates again. And there's only one case where it's all girls. Now, remember, if you're not sure if you did it right, how can you check? What do we know about all of our probabilities? They better add up to one. So we know that that's true. Okay, so that's step one. Get your probability distribution part filled in. Now we got to fill in the rest of the table so we can do our means and standard deviations. So let's slide up here a little bit. So we had 0, 0 0.375, 0 0.750, 0 0.375. All right. Now our x is so one, uh, 0, 1, 4 and nine based off of our x's and now we got to multiply so we get a zero zero point three seven five looks like uh, what uh, one point I can't multiply sorry one point five zero zero and we got what nine times that so one point one two five all right 
Now, remember what we said, if we wanted to make sure we added up the right stuff, we only add up the columns with P's. We already did the first one, so we're just going to add these two up. And that should get us to uh, get us towards our answers. So if we add all this up, we have 1.500, so 1.5. And if we add this one up, it looks like 3.000. Okay, so now let's find our mean and standard deviation. So the mean, remember, is just this. So mu is equal to 1.5, 1 1.5, yeah, don't forget the girls. 1.5 girls is going to be on there. And then our standard deviation. So the square root. 3 minus 1.5 squared. All right, so if we do that, well, 1.5 squared, I believe, is 2.25. 3 minus that would be the square root of 0 0.75. Oops, 75. And the square root of that, 0 0.866 and so on. Well, what do we want to round this to? Now, our mean is 1.5, and that's okay. It's one extra decimal place than our data, so, so definitely one decimal place is good. If we wanted to round this to one decimal place, why not? Let's make life easier for us. So 0.9 girls. Now, if you said 0.87 girls, I would certainly take that as well. So, so that would be fine. Okay, so we got our mean, we got our standard deviation, and what else did they want? Is three girls a significantly high number of girls for a family of three children? Now, this is the fun one, because we can answer this two different ways. So let's do both of them. So the first way is with the range rule of thumb. Now, remember the range rule of thumb, we have to find those cutoffs based off of the mean and standard deviation. So we need our min significant, which is going to be equal to the mean, minus two times the standard deviation. So that's 1.8. So this should be a negative 0 0.3. And don't forget those units. I'll be a stickler. And then the max. So 1.5 plus 2 times that, so 1.8, and that looks like 3.3. So now we have those significant cutoffs, so now we should be able to answer the question. So let's go back one more time. It says, is three girls a significantly high number of girls? Well, where does three fall in, with regards to these cutoffs? It's between, right? It's between those two cutoffs. And if it's between, that means it's not significant. So not significant because, and if you wanted to do uh, inequality, So that's why it's between those two cutoffs that you just found, so it's got to be not significant. So that's one way. What about the 5% rule? So, <clears throat> so if we're looking at three, probability-wise, we have to look at three, and we're looking at significantly high. So is three significantly high when we look at we look at the probability of three and up well what's the probability of three i'm going to snap all my lead probability of three is right there 0 0.125 how does that compare to five percent or 0.05 it's 
greater than it. If it's greater than 0 0.05, that means it's not significant. So this is nice. It reinforces each other. So hopefully that's always the case. That's what you want to see. All right. So now you have a pretty big picture of things that you can do with significance, looking at the range rule of thumb or the 5% rule. Again, that's just kind of an informal thing that I call that. It's not official. <laughs> So, all right, so that wraps up this section. Make sure for the next section you bring that scientific calculator, or if you have one already, a graphing one already, that's fine, but don't go out and buy one because they cost over $100. Scientific one will do the trick. And there's also free uh, scientific calculator apps. If you want a link to one, just let me know and I can send it to you by email. It's free and it works, so. All right, that wraps it up. See you in the next ones.